Christian Petrarca. Welcome to the Dylan Friends podcast. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Mate, what'd you think? <laughs> did you write that? I did. It's nice. That Some was, great six text. I must say, man, that was the hardest name I've written because like normally, <laughs> do you know that, I don't know if this is a thing, I want to find the stat, but normally I feel like a, sh- a name, a first name is shorter than the last name. That's usually correct. Yours is one letter longer. Is it really? Yeah, Two, nine and eight. Six, eight. Yeah, wow. Mate, welcome to the show. Um, it's it's unbelievable to have you here. And honestly, it is a, an absolute pleasure. Um, I've been a big fan of your work for a long time. And we will go into how I first came to know Christian Petrarca because it's a, it's a very weird story. But um, first, mate, what's been happening? How are you going? Off, a, off an incredible season, um, I might just add. So congratulations on that firstly. Thank you. And um, how's the off-season been? Yeah, it's been, it's been, it's been pretty good. Um, obviously, the hub... And then for five months was, was pretty frustrating and, and hard at some times, but at the same time we're up in Queensland and it was, and it was beautiful. Queensland's amazing. So we had a luxury of doing that. Um, and then my missus and I, we went away for five weeks up in Queensland. So I uh, went to Noosa, uh, Hamilton Island, Port Douglas and sort of the perks of being up there in quarantine. You can sort of just stay up there and um, yeah, both our families are pretty much selling, telling us to, to stay up there as long as possible and there's no point in coming down. So we were... Oh, mate. It was pretty frustrating for my family. I kept sending group chats and <laughs> messages of me at the beach and, and uh, I, don't, I wouldn't get a reply. And my mum would message me just saying, I think you should just probably just, just text them to me, not to your brother. Yeah, so. that's it. <laughs> Seriously, it was, it was funny like how, you know, we've only been in lockdown for like three or four weeks now, but I've sort of already forgotten about how hard it actually was. Like it was a tough time down here, but seeing all the boys up in the Gold Coast, man, and one thing I actually am happy about, off topic, I know, but... You're a big traveling man. You love traveling. Yep. How much now seeing our own country, and I think for me, even thinking about this, like we're so like we live in such a beautiful country. You don't realize how nice it is in Australia. Like we, we go to Europe, we go to US, all these places, but like we have the best like scenery and like we're, like we're the best country easily. I was yeah. My girlfriend and I were saying that the whole time we were, yeah. were over there. We're like I don't understand why people travel overseas. Uh, I mean, I mean, I've been traveling overseas, yeah. a bit, so that's probably. Uh, but when you're up there, you think, well, the beaches are absolutely beautiful. Yeah, the food's amazing. You sort of know what you're going to get. It's an English-speaking language, so yeah, it's, it's easier. It's easier. Yeah. Um, so that was good. I guess probably the reason why we travel for so long is usually interstate travel is actually quite expensive. We travel, it is. so you may as well go to America and 100%. extra, extra 300 hundred, four hundred bucks. And yeah, you're actually in a different country. So no, you're right. Yeah, you've just debunked that now. Thank you. The reason that just on that, the two places I do want to go um, in Australia, I've been thinking about it. Obviously, Queensland's one of them where I saw you spend a lot of time. I want to go to the Kimberleys in Darwin. Have yeah. you seen that? No, I haven't. It looks unbelievable. Yeah, it looks incredible. I I've really want to go there. We're fortunate enough to play. Uh, we've got a. We've got a. Um, you got affiliation with yeah affiliation Northern with, Northern with the Northern Territory. Yeah. So we've played. Uh, I played three games in Alice Springs, and I think three games in Northern Territory. And then when I did my, when I was in um, my first year, I did my ACL, I was fortunate enough to go up to, to Alice Springs in the rural areas. And it's, it's amazing. Like it's yeah. so, um, it sort of gives you perspective. You're like, you know, they don't really care about who you are as long as yeah. you're having a kick of the footy with them or just walking around with them. And um, sometimes here when you're complaining about traffic up there, you know, they don't really complain about anything and they've, you know, they've got no running water or, or no real food. So um, that was probably the biggest thing I took out of, you know, that trip in Alice Springs, but Darwin, Darwin's a beautiful place. I mean, there, there's so many waterfalls and, um, it, it is really crocodiles. Yeah, it is. It is really, really cool. I know Stephen May's from there and, um, he raves about it and he absolutely loves it. loves it. He does. Um, mate, let's get into it now. Obviously Christian Petrarch, a big name, very big name. So you can, you can tell when we spoke and I locked you in for the show, I was wrapped. So <laughs> I'll tell you a quick story. Cause I went, over here, we're in Albert Park at the moment. It was a hot day in Melbourne, which is rare. So you could work out which day it was. And we went to the beach with my mate. And I was telling my mate, I said, mate, you wouldn't believe it. Locked in um, the big truck next week. I'm pumped. He goes, bullshit. I know the truck. And my mate always says he knows people. <laughs> like he go. always says he knows people. <laughs> and he never does. Who is it? And my mate, Jake Trotter, said <laughs> yeah, actually no <laughs> he knows you from a long time ago. Yep. And he said that you two have beef. He said that you two still haven't gotten over something that happened back when you were about nine or ten years old. At the Park Orchards Footy Club, you piffed a rock and it KO'd him in the eye. What? <laughs> I don't He's remember. accusing you of, of slicing his eye open with a rock. <laughs> it must have been a burger night. It was a I burger night. Say- it was a burger night. That's what he said. It was, it was a, a burger night. I am... Jake, if you're listening <laughs> to this, I cannot remember that. And if, if you do accuse me, I apologise. <laughs> well, that's, that's pretty full on. Yeah, it's, the accusation's full on. But 
I don't know. Maybe so you, true. you I deny. I, I, That's yeah. what. So I missed that part. Of, it was a burger night at the park orchard. It was a burger night. Yeah, back in about two thousand and six. That's hilarious. Yeah, that is so funny. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. No, no throwing rocks. How's it going, Jack? Is he good? Um, he's been better. Good. Is he's, he's, he's I, I still think it's had, nutrition. I think he's had long-term effects from it. To oh, be wow. honest, oh, it's the only thing How's I can put it down eyes, to. Has he got his bad eyesight or something? It's just mentally. I don't think he's. Wow. Aware. I might have, yeah. to him, I might have to give him a message after. Yeah, this. maybe, maybe. <laughs> um, but I want to talk about my first memories of you, mate, because obviously um, you're a few years younger than me. But I remember one day uh, there was a TAC Cup game on, and it was at Icon Park. And this is my first memories of you because I was obviously at Carlton at that stage, probably playing in the VFL after this game. <laughs> yeah. So I was watching. I saw this kid and he was fucking big boy, like big boy. You was, <laughs> like, I reckon you were, were you bigger nearly then than you were now? Or is it just I'm comparison a lot, I'm to a lot what? leaner. Yeah, I'll give you that. You, mate, you were like, when I say huge, I'm talking not big, I'm talking say, strong. You can call me fat, that's fine. No, 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 no. <laughs> we would not be saying that here. You're a big boy, but I remember you in the big number seven. Yep, number seven. Eastern Rangers. Yep. Sticks out, and you just dom- you would dominate. It was it's what we're seeing today in in 2020. Do do you remember that? I'm sure you would because it was you. Yeah, I did. We played all that. <laughs> we played all our finals um, at Icon Park, and um, yeah, I do remember. I do remember a fair few games. I think um, there was a game against Geelong in the prelim um, where I probably played my my best game. I reckon that was um, it. Yeah, but yeah, I was a bit a bit of a heifer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just think when you grow up, like I. Would, Grew up playing basketball, high level basketball, and high level football, um, but it's not really till you get into like a system like TSC Cup or AFL where you understand nutrition and diet and and fitness, and you sort of get out, you understand it, but yeah. you don't really understand it. One hundred percent. Yeah, like you, you understand what foods to eat, and you understand you know you should be running and you should be working out, but you don't yeah, you don't really get it. And that's I think something that can really stuff with a young player as well. Like for me. When I got to, to footy, I was probably opposite. I couldn't put on weight. Yeah. So they were saying like, eat so much food, eat yeah. so much food, eat all this. And I'd used to eat till I'd like throw up just to try and put on weight. But then you speak to guys like Cade Simpson and he's like, he yeah. just knew that he played good at that weight. Yeah. So he didn't want to. But I suppose leading into the next point is when you first got to Richmond. Oh. Jeez. <laughs> Where did that come from? I have no idea. I'm That's not fine. sure. When you first got to St Kilda. I'm joking. That was oh a joke. That God. one. When you like, first got, like, this guy's serious. <laughs> when you first got to <laughs> Melbourne, I'll just check that there. Check that pick two. Yep. Okay. When you first got to Melbourne, yep. your first year there, how would you rate that? What did you, what did you come in like? I suppose you'll pick two. Obviously, you're a very talented player. Yep. What were you first like when you got into the system? Um, I was pretty chaotic, to be honest. Yeah, I I was very exuberant. Like I felt like I came with a lot of energy, a lot of confidence. Yep. Um, and I don't think many guys knew that at the club and it's probably, I've never been in the football club where, um, there's so many other characters around me and so many personalities that you sort of got to handle. And I guess as well, it's a full-time job with TSC cup. You're only training Tuesday night and Thursday night and that's it. And you go to school. So that was probably the hardest thing, uh, probably for the, my teammates to probably mm. get around me was that, um, you know, I got a lot of energy, a lot of confidence. So coming in, I probably weren't expecting a, a first first year to sort of be like that. But um, I thought thought as time went on, you know, I, I guess they got used to me, I guess. So mm. but I was my first year, I did my ACL. So I was in rehab for, for 11 months. So that was very hard, very frustrating, um, very isolated. I had Jack Trengrove with me who was um, was out for, you know, three and a half years, four years with a with, foot, yeah, yeah. navicular injury. So it was, it was kind of a blessing in disguise. And you look back at it and you go, having that year out, um, to sort of focus on your mental side of the game, focus on, you know, your physical preparation and being with someone who I think Jack Trengo is one of the stiffest blokes in mm. in the world, to be honest. I mean, he's one of the nicest guys, does everything right, ultimate professional um, and someone that shouldn't be getting injuries like that because, yeah. you know, his first three years at the AFL, well, first two years were unbelievable at Melbourne and, and then captain the club and, um, and then it sort of just derailed from there and, um, so someone like him in rehab was, was incredible. So many, you know, gave me so much advice on, you know, just being prepared, being organized. And it wasn't just about rehab, it was about more off the field, you know, looking to do something off the field like uni or something like that. And he was studying at the time. So, um, yeah, it was, it was really, really beneficial for me. You spoke about before, like coming in and, and probably coming in red hot, a um, lot of energy. And you said teammates probably weren't ready for it. Do you reckon like some guys and, and back then, especially being at, at, at Melbourne when, 
I think that was probably like nearly the lowest point when you came in because you had yourself and Brayshaw came in pick two and three. Yep, yep. So it was probably like a time where the club wasn't obviously going too well. You had two like very highly rated players come in and you come in with a lot of energy. Did like older guys not like that or? Um, I don't know. I can only probably speak from my perspective, but I felt like, um, <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. Yeah. I felt like it was hard to, for them to get used to, I reckon. I've, I've ADHD. I reckon I've ADHD. So yeah. <laughs> self, <laughs> self diagnosed. So um, even in meetings and that, like I felt like I was just losing concentration very easily and getting distracted. And because um, it's full on, I think like, not just for myself, but for any 17 year old. It's crazy. You know, people don't realize like you're going from 8 a.m. to, you know, 5 p.m., 4.30 at night. And, you know, it's a massive step. That's every day pretty much. And people don't realize it's a massive step up. And um, from when you first with TSA Cup, you're doing 5.30 to eight o'clock at night and that's it yeah no i couldn't agree more i think a lot of people like still ask footballers i know like oh what do you do during the day mm. it's like yeah. it's so hard to explain but you are there all day and you it are. just doesn't stop and even on your day off you're like compulsory non-compulsory non-compulsory compulsory like that, oh you should get a massage or come in for some treatment or go for a swim or do something like that so you, you're pretty much there even if you're off the even if you're you know back at home you're still thinking about 100%. What you should be doing. With the with the knee, obviously in the first year, not ideal. And you said it was a bit of a blessing. What did you learn in that time, I suppose, mindset wise? Was it just more about that preparation? Like you said, your diet, um, getting strong, um, being a professional athlete. Did you reckon that that sort of just gave you that year to, to get that right? Yeah, definitely. I think probably more just that nothing's guaranteed. I think, you know, I've always been a high level player in everything I've done and I've always been very successful as a junior, always won awards and um, and then my first year, I'm pick number two, sort of all going to the plan, the way I've sort of perceived my whole life, pretty much. You know, I've played pretty well every year, um, and then bang, ACL. It's like, well, shit. It's yeah. like, oh, well, you know, I've done everything so well from 17 years old to 18, and first time I get an actual gig at a, a club, I've done my ACL straight away. And you just hear so many stories of guys who are so talented or um, who, you know, risk injuries sort of, you know, ruin their career. And I, you know, you just keep. That, that constant battle in your head is just every day, you know, am I going to be the same player? Um, what's it going to be like? But um, for me, it was just about harnessing that and just embracing being in rehab. And, and I feel like, you know, it's not set, it's not setting long-term goals. It's all about setting short-term goals and focusing on the day and focus on being in present and not worrying about the future. Cause when you worry about the future, I feel like you get a lot, lot more anxious than what you are. So oh, if you, yeah. If you focus on just, you know, being in present and it's sort of still with me today, like if you just focus on being in the present and focus on the now, then, you know, the rest will just take care of itself. I love that, man. I do. I think that's so true. Like not even just in footy, just in life. Like mm. you, the moment you start thinking too far in the future, you know, you freak out about shit that's, that's not even like, that it might control. not even happen. Exactly it, right. It might not even happen like yep. to do with. But um, no, you're so right. And even just saying that there about, you know, you've been in high level sport your whole time and you, you've you obviously had setbacks through that, but nothing as big as that. No, not a not a long-term injury like that. Like was that- little niggles and that. Yeah, thing. was that like a time where, did it cross your mind thinking, you know, and this is dramatic saying this, but again, all these things cross your mind when you look into the future, you don't worry about the present. Did you actually think, fuck, like, you know, maybe this isn't going to happen anymore? Is that when like South Doubt does sort of kick yeah, in? Yeah, 100%. The first, when you do your knee, the first- 48 hours you don't really know what's going on or when you do a long-term injury you sort of don't know what's going on you just sort of everyone's sort of ushering, ushering you to do stuff mm. and you know go get a scan and media are there and you know sort of everyone's sort of wishing you all the best and stuff and then it's not really i reckon a month or two months in when you're actually in the heart of the or in the deep of the rehab and you think this shit this is gonna be a long road back like i'm only two months in and i'm already struggling you know you're doing box squats for every mm. day you're doing 100 reps and it's pretty frustrating just you and the gym coach and um, i got some funny stories the gym coach he was a very he was like he was like a narc like he was like yeah. it was pretty funny he goes to me the day one he goes all right track like you know this is a this is like a little humble abode like if you have anything to say about the club or if you have frustrations about a player or something you just say it here like i won't hold any grudges <laughs> you know i want you to feel comfortable in the gym and i remember i reckon i was probably six days in and we've done about a hundred sets of hamstring curls and am I allowed to swear? Yes. Yeah. And I, was like, I, was like, I remember getting off the machine. I was like, fucking hell, I'm so fucking sick of this. Yeah. And he, and he cracked it at me and he goes, mate, none of that shit, like none of this negativity in here. This is a, like, this is a place of, you know, pretty much contradictory what he yeah. said. I was like, oh, you just told me like four days ago. Yeah. 
He goes, no, nah, never said that. And I'm like, well, okay, well you did. And he goes, and he's like, are you back chatting me? Like, <laughs> like pretty much cracked it at me. And I was like, from then I was like, this is gonna be a, I knew this is gonna be a long, long 12 nine, months. A long 12 months if we're doing this every day. Fast forward, man, because it's gone from um, your draft to 2019. Talk about that space in between before 2020. How would you say you were tracking along in, in your career? It's a good was question. It, was, it, was it meeting up to expectation? Do you think like you were, you were comfortable in where you were? Did you think you were going to go off or do you think that, yeah? You always have expectation of the player and um, the person you want to be on the field and off the field. And I think the first year, the first couple of years, I felt like, I felt like it was good. I felt like, you know, I was coming back from a knee, less expectation about me. My first couple of years, I felt like I was just going out there and playing having fun, enjoying it. And there was sort of that time where you're like, okay, like you're 21 now, like it's time to switch on. Not time to switch on. It's more like, all right, you know, you need to hit, you need to start hitting those accolades. Like, you know, we want to make finals. We want to win a premiership. You want to be an All-Australian. You want to be stuff like that. And the last two years, I felt like it's really derailed me. It's felt like, you know, when you focus on individual accolades or you focus on things way too much, you actually get further away from it. Mm. I feel like this year probably been the biggest thing for me is actually just stripping everything back and just going out there and playing and having fun and just really enjoying like when you were as a kid. And I felt like that's probably the reason why I've had this year in terms of 2020 is because, or even even last year in 2019, my, probably my back end was the same. I was, we weren't going great as a club and I was sort of saying, you know what, like I'm just gonna go out and play. Like I'm just, I'm so sick of structure. I'm so sick of, you know, I have to play this position. I was like, I'm sure go out and play, play on my natural instinct, have fun. And as soon as I felt like the club sort of embraced me being instinctual and, and even myself, like, you know, not, not, be, not getting stressed of how I'm playing, not worrying about touches or what, not worrying about goals. All that stuff actually came. Yeah. So this year was a massive year for me in terms of, okay, well, I'm going to the midfield. I've worked bloody hard off the field on my mindset, you know, preparation physically and mentally. Don't worry about what's going to happen. Just just focus on the game and, and the rest will just take care of itself. And um, yeah, it, it, it did, I guess, on the field. No, it definitely did, man. Because I think back now, and it's funny, you know, and I, I know that you, you're a fan of mindset. I love the way, you know, successful people go about things. But if you think about that mindset for yourself in saying you're going to strip it back, just go out there and do your thing, which is something that is obviously that's, you know, that works for you and it definitely did. But then you look at the the counterpart and the guy that, probably yourself and Lockie Neal had two of the best seasons. Like you could have either way won the Brownlow yeah. medal. And then in his post-match, like uh, post-Brownlow thing, I remember him saying that like he wrote down like these things yeah, where I, you were saying like that. Well, I, well yeah. I was actually going to say, because I actually still, I do those things. Oh, you do? Yeah. Well, my goals are actually, yeah, I have, I have goals, obviously. I don't think everyone should have goals. Yeah. But I don't actually... I focus on them and I worry. I don't worry about them as much as I used to. So you I sort of like put it out there. I you put it out there. Yeah. I put it out there to the universe. Yeah. I put it out there Love to myself. No, that man, you, you just, I just oh. got good. Yeah, that, that, that's the show. I put it out show. there. I, I think about it every day. I've yeah. got a vision board. I do all that stuff, but it's not, it's not necessarily worrying about, like it's going to come. Like it's, it's, it's going to yeah, happen. It. It's, it's already gonna, happened. It's, it's already happened. <laughs> You're just waiting the for future's to do happened. it. The future's happened. It just waiting to happen. Oh man, I love that. So well, I felt like yeah, I felt like during the games, probably the last two or three years, I, during games, I'll be thinking about it too much. Yeah, yeah. You miss so a kick you, and you, you think, oh, put it in your you you put it out there. You say what you want to do. So yep. I, I'm gonna just break this down, and you don't have to say what you put on it and stuff. But will you sort of go start of the year? You write down these are the things that I want to achieve. Yep. Now I'll put them in the back of my mind. Yep. And just do my thing and have fun and, yep. and play and, and just play instinctively. And with yep. this in the back of my mind, yep. they're going to happen. Yep. And that's not just on the field, but also off field. Like I have a, a vision board for off the field and on yep. the field of the person I want to be. Uh, like for example, I, in my, I got a photo group, like little thing. And yep. like Jordan Lewis is someone that I've really idolized. So I've got a photo of him. Like I just love the way he goes about life on the field and off the field. Yeah. So it's someone that I've sort of look up to. Um, so I've got a photo of him and it's sort of, when you sort of look through the photos, you sort of just like, all right, you know, you sort of just think about it and sort of how you want to feel about it. And um, yeah. Mate, I love it. I, um, and I've been wanting to do this for the last few weeks because when I finished up um, footy in, in Sydney, I wrote, a, like bought a diary and I wrote down like everything I was great before, everything that like I love doing, you know, um, and then after that, I wrote down all the things that I want to get, but I wrote down them more yep. like I had them. Yep. So you know what I mean? Like yeah, I wrote 100%. down saying like, yeah. 
I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be having a podcast full time. Yeah, I will be doing this. I'll be doing this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry. I am doing this. Yeah. I am doing this. And yeah. I went back and looked at the other day and every single thing yeah. I wrote down, I was, I it's was crazy. Doing. It's crazy. And, and like you said, you don't think like throughout the year, it didn't actually click to no. me that I was still doing it, but it's just that subconscious yeah. sort of thing. And I think when I first got to the, <clears throat> into the league, I felt all that, it's probably when it's just started that mindfulness and meditation and, um, yeah, the relaxation type stuff. I thought it was the biggest wank. I thought me this too, is, man. this is yeah. what it like, nah, like this is your, you make me calm down. Like I'm all about energy and, yeah. and confidence and like, you know, why would I want to slow down for? And then like probably it wasn't until, you know, COVID I was down the beach with my girlfriend um, down Sorrento and we'll live in there for a month. And I reckon just being around the beach, like, you know, you go for walks, you chill out, you listen to the beach and then being up in Richardor is the same. Like I'd wake up every morning at 6.30, sit on the beach for half an hour. You don't actually have to do meditation or mindfulness. You just sort it's of just sit and breathe and just yeah. relax and chill out and having that time to for yourself, I guess, and just sort of, you know, focusing on yourself and worrying about, you know, what you can do. 100%. Um, last bit on this, because I, I can get really caught up talking about <laughs> yeah, this stuff. I'm the exact same. I... Uh, I just love your mindset on this. But when you said before, like people think mindset's like a wank and, you know, fuck, you know, fuck doing that. That's not going to do anything. Yeah. You, you're right. If you have that mindset, it won't do anything for you. But like, if you do, if you are open to it and you do practice it, you, then you do see the benefits. Yep. So like, it's one of those things. If you're into it, do it, do it. Yeah. If you're not, well, you're only like, really benefiting you know you're not benefiting yourself by not being yeah, open to something yeah. like this because realistically you can you, you it's about practice isn't it like like you said when you first start these things the whole time you're just thinking what the fuck am i doing yeah 100 percent. that's it's a good point i think you got to find a balance i mean it isn't for everyone i mean guys i know guys try and do it and they get frustrated but it's not about you want to it's try. About, it's not a, exactly. Yeah. It's not about the frustration. It's more just like just try little bits here and there, and you'll slowly get used to it. I think. Like you know, I started off two two minutes of breathing. Yeah. And I've, I've is got that the Wim Hof sort of thing. Oh, uh, more just by myself. Yeah, yourself, just yeah. some podcasts that my um, our psychologist at the club gave me, and I'm um, not podcasts. Yeah, sort of him just talking. And yeah, I was, two minutes. I was like, this is I'm over this. Like this mm. is so boring. And then you sort of just, then you sort of like you know you get longer and longer. And now I sort of don't even use podcasts. You sort of just do it yourself. Sort of just do it yourself for five or ten minutes, and um, it's all you really need. And just to take a moment out. It's not even meditation. Sort of just taking a moment out of your what you're doing, being present, and being present. So again, last bit on this. We, in terms of mindset, like in general, and like going to the next level in 2020 and end of 2019 these things were happening, but do you have a, is it, is it just that being present for you or do you have a structure that you do on game day, like going into a game or? No, I, st I still have a, like a set structure of what Pretty I do Monday, to, Monday to Saturday. Yeah, yeah. I write down every Sunday night what I'm going to do Monday to Friday. I feel like you need structure. I yeah. feel like you'd understand like yeah. the club, you have a calendar, you know, every, of what you're doing from 8am to years, for really? the next yeah. two years. Yeah. Exactly right. So I feel like I've, I've always been someone that likes to be regimented and likes to have some sort of structure. That's why off season is so hard because you, oh, you wake up at seven or seven thirty and you're like, well, what am I going to do after I finish my running at 10 o'clock? And then you, then you do your weights till 12. And you're like, hey, well, I've got six hours to kill. Like, yeah. What should I do? Should I go call a mate? No, nope, they're all working. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> should I go get coffee? But there's only so many coffees. Yeah, yeah I, know, <laughs> so. I know. No, honestly, that, that thing of structure, I reckon I, I couldn't agree more because even since I've left footy and, and – for people listening to understand this. And I think I have spoken about it in the past, but basically like, you know, you go from primary school, high school to footy where you're on a, where you're literally on a timetable your whole life. Yep. And then you go to not having one. Yep. I was lost. Yep. People would say to me like, what are you doing tomorrow? I was like, man, I don't even know what I'm doing in the <laughs> fucking five minutes. But now I'm so like meticulous. Yep. Good word. It's a great word. With my like calendar. Yep. So like, everything I do, like goes straight into that and yeah. you need it. Like anyone out there who doesn't, you know, have a good calendar, you've got to invest yep. in just your phone and link it with your laptop. 100%. It just goes in, it goes out, goes in. 100%. Mate, on footy, obviously incredible year, as we touched on. Talk us through some of your toughest opponents and your most respected guys you've played on and, and who you, you look up to. First one I can sort of reel off is Pendlebury is someone that mm. I've always grown up. I was a Collingwood supporter growing up and someone that I've loved and, Cause he had that basketball background. I was like, oh, he's like, he's like me. Like, 
basketball then yeah. he transitioned to footy yeah. like <laughs> I was like I have to, I have to love him like he's a ripper and he's actually I've met him a couple of times and he's a really good bloke and he's just he's just he's a good dude yeah and he's really respectful and um his analysis of games and the way he sees football is is incredible um he's someone that yeah I've really looked up to Travis Burke's another one that um for what he's doing at his age is, is pretty incredible and um, yeah. sort of both of them are sort of define the oh your peaks at 27 you that's it like after 30 you get like one year deals and it's like mm. shouldn't be like that anymore like the way recovery and technology these days like people are sort of beating that odds so someone that I really look up to and um, tough as opponent I've had a few I think Ed Kernow's one that I remember my first half against Carlton this year I was playing really well and, and then he clamped me second half and He's just a little shit. He's, he's just a little shit. He's not there. He's he's nothing like, phases him. I don't even know how to explain it. <laughs> Again, it was funny you said this because someone else said the same thing about Ed once before. But he is so mentally like switched on to something. Yeah. If you said like do this, you know, stare at that wall for three hours, he'd be like just staring at yeah. it till like he could look through it. But he's someone that you want to play like play with because yeah. you know he doesn't care how many touches he has in the midfield. He just wants to win and play his role and. It's what every midfielder needs. 100%. Um, and as a forward line, I think that there's been a couple. I mean, Ben Stratton's one that's very tough. Um, just always on you, niggling you the whole time. Um, yeah, I, I guess probably them too. And, and Geelong, Geelong's defense, like Jay Collard, yep. he's, um, he's someone that's a very good defender as well. Obviously, superstar play, great year. <laughs> but does that give you the green light when it comes to coach race? Do, does... Does Goody just look the other way if you if you stuff up, if you're not running both ways, if you stuff up off the field, does he still give it to you? Yeah, for sure. For what, sure. Is any, does anything <laughs> stick out? It might have even been earlier coaches. I can't actually think of – he doesn't really – he gives sprays, but he doesn't – they're not – like They're he not personal? When we, we – They don't, they he don't calls cut them, deep. He calls them dad chats to me. So they're dad not – they're not, <laughs> yeah. it's more like I'm disappointed. Like I'm not – Yeah, that's You know, really like worse. I'm not angry. It's probably worse. It's yeah. worse. I wouldn't say he's actually ever yelled at me and abused me. He's – um. He's very good in the way he sort of speaks to me and, and talks to all our players, I guess. Yeah, um, yeah probably, definitely, definitely running defensively is definitely something that pops up every, <laughs> every second week, I reckon. Mate, you mentioned before that you're a you, you're basketball, I will know this basketball transition to into footy like Scott Pendery, but I know that's not true. You're actually an ice hockey transition into basketball, wow, transition into footy. this is some deep, <laughs> deep stuff. <laughs> So, wow. can you tell me now that <laughs> ice hockey is actually the best said this would rock me transition <laughs> into AFL? Wow. Well, that's, um, I love, I love the Mighty Ducks. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> you guys watch the Mighty Ducks? <laughs> yeah, of course. Yes. Knuckle puck. So, yep. Goldberg. Yep, Goldberg. Close mate. Yep. And my brothers and I were obsessed with it. Absolutely obsessed <laughs> oh, with it. I and think everyone was. I had the t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> and I went to, um, I remember... My brother had these rollerblades and all I said to mum was like, I want to do ice hockey. I want to play ice hockey. And she's like, Christian, like we're in Warren like, yeah. There's no <laughs> ice around. Like I'm not paying for you to go to Mount Bula yeah. five hours away to play ice hockey. Um, but I remember mum, I think maybe for my birthday or something, she gave me a, um, she went to ballistics in Ringwood. Yeah. It was like, yeah. <laughs> and she bought me a, uh, before, before it was like skating and that she, um, I think it was like a sports store. And she gave me like she bought me a, a hockey puck and a stick, and uh, and then she bought me some rollerblades for myself. And I remember in the backyard, I used to just love it's it. Knuckle puck time. Yeah. It's like, it's like <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's good by you. Thank uh, you. Yeah. yeah, and then transition to basketball. So the agility sort of worked out. I yeah. think it's. I think basketball gets too much credit these days. Yeah. I think it's, that if he's half hockey. serious and yeah. any recruiters, because a lot of recruiters, yeah. we know that. So I should be thanking Wayne Gretzky. Right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And Goldberg. And Goldberg. Um, because, like I said, they. Will be now, recruiters will be funneling those channels, <laughs> those of, channels. Of, of ice hockey, which we know. <laughs> Last one that I've dug up on you, mate, because it's this is a weird one. Um, you said before about your diet, and um, it wasn't great early days. Oh, but no. is it true you still like eating meat pies after games? Well, you you definitely messaged my brother. <laughs> <laughs> I know this for a fact. <laughs> And you know, and he wants you want me to tell the story behind it. Tell the story. Yeah. <laughs> That's good, mate. So I love. Yeah, well, who doesn't love a two dollar fifty meat pie oh, for a man. game? Of meat pies were the goats. So, uh, canines, canines were the best thing in the world. You loved them. <laughs> so I remember um, Sunday, 
Sunday Arvos was when we used to play games. So I was playing for Warren Diet and our team wasn't great. We were, we're in gold division, which is we why, gold, why yeah. JFL. And, yes, um, yes. We'd get pumped. We'd lose by 100 points every game. I remember it got to like seven rounds left. I'm like, I don't want to play. Like to mum, I'd wake up like, I don't want to play. Like it's <laughs> embarrassing. Like it's really embarrassing. And I was playing two years above my age group. No, I was playing a year, sorry. A yeah. year. And I was like, I don't want to play. Like, I want to just quit. I want to play in the year level below me. I want to, you know, I want to play in the midfield and all this stuff. And she's like, just, just, you got six games left. Like, don't worry about it. Like, just move on. And I remember mum was on, like, a, I think mum was away for that weekend. And um, my dad drove me and my brother's like, oh, we'll come watch you play. <laughs> I got two older brothers, 30, uh, 31 and, and 29. And so there's a bit of an age gap. And um, their footy, senior footy was very physical. So they'd rip me every time I'd play. Um, and give me heaps of advice. And I remember we're playing against this, uh, playing against uh, Heidel, Heidelberg, I think. No, Glen Iris, sorry, Glen Iris. And I was playing full forward and um, there was this big guy on me. He was, he was very fat. I'm not yeah. going to lie. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> I couldn't probably say that yeah, myself. Yeah, I was yeah. fat at the time too. And it was a ground ball. And I remember he beat me in a race. He sprinted over there, got there before <laughs> me. And I think I tried to tackle him and he shrugged me off and like I fell to the ground and... I didn't hear about, oh, like I heard about it for the next hour and a half in the car ride home. I'm like, you're so shit. Like, can't believe a fat guy beat you to the ball. <laughs> like, just typical older brother stuff. <laughs> and I remember I was like the biggest, I was like, I was like 12 and I just caused the biggest hissy fit, like cracked it. I was like, you guys are a joke. Like, I hate you all. And, and I had this meat pie. And I, <laughs> my brother was sitting next to me and my dad's you and I threw the meat pie at him and <laughs> I remember it was real hot and it burnt <laughs> all his neck and the uh, and dad's window and dad cracked it and I remember I like you know when you when you have fights with your parents or you sort of pack your bag yeah <laughs> I remember I sort of I'm leaving like yeah. did you mom? pack up yeah. Yeah. I took my little toy and like packed my bag and oh. I went down like the street for like a hundred meters and came back <laughs> well, how how far were you away for do you reckon. How long? Oh, like 40 minutes. 40, yeah. Okay. yeah when you get home, you get home. Took my yeah. <laughs> Hockey stick? Hockey stick, yeah. yeah. Done. Off to, off to the US. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit, that's good. Okay, we appreciate that. And I can't <laughs> confirm who that was. A good uh, good source never reveals Thanks, Jules. His, his secrets. <laughs> now, we spoke about the transition to hockey. But one thing we love, I, I love talking about um, your off-field stuff. You're a very busy man. Um, you love your travel, as we touched on earlier. And a huge trip, was it last year? Yep. 2019, you yep. went over to the state. So that was yep. a bit of an off-season trip slash training camp. Um, how was it? What did you get up to? Um, yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. And just on that quickly, yep. sorry, before we go, obviously being um, basketball background, good mates with, with Ben Simmons, I, I'm assuming this time of year, sort of at the end of the season, there's always <laughs> someone in the team that starts trying to get a little bit closer to you because they know you're going to hang out oh, in the no, NBA. Yeah. Is it, like, <laughs> yeah. if, if, who are those guys? Because you're going on these trips. Well, 20... Oh, sorry. Everyone yeah. knows you're going to go over there, you're going to hang out with the NBA <laughs> players. And there must be someone the second half of the year that starts to just slowly work their way in, just like asking questions about what you're doing in the off season. Yeah. Well, I, th I think the funny thing is that 20... When did I go with, I went with Harmsy and Dom Tyson and Nick Pierce, um, Dom's friend. I went in end of 2017 and I don't think, so I was like, I'm going to go to America. I'm going to go see Ben. They're like, we're going to go to America. Do you want to link up? And I was like, yeah, no worries. Like I'll, I'll message Ben. We'll, we'll go to a game. And I don't think the people at the club sort of realized I was actually really good friends with him or, you know, friends with him. And they thought, oh, it's just, yeah, he just played basketball with him yeah, yeah, yeah. seven and bullshit he'll get caught so whatever yeah. and tickets and, <laughs> yeah. but that that sort of trip in 2017 we went and watched philadelphia this is a funny story we went in the we went behind the scenes like we went to the buffet we, we met the coach and they were like in awe they were like this is ridiculous but the funny thing was like i was like oh we, we'll get courtside tickets but i was the one that got the courtside tickets they were up in the bleachers <laughs> so i was i was on like the celebrity road that's so good with ben's brother and like they were sort of they were actually in good spots. They weren't in the bleachers, I lie. And um, but then after the game, Ben's like, "What are you guys doing?" I'm like, "Oh, we got a train ride back to New York because Philadelphia's an hour and a half away." Like, "Oh, we got a train ride back to Philly, out uh, to New York." He's like, "Oh, don't worry about that. Like, cancel it. Like, we'll go, we'll go to, we'll go to a few nightclubs over there." And in they Philadelphia, were in New York. So we, so we drove down. Like, I drove. This is even a funny story. I drove down in Ben's Range Rover, and then they had to get a cab. <laughs> <laughs> So it cost them like 400 American, I reckon. <laughs> no, nah, it didn't cost them that much, but they did drive down in a cab. I got to give them that. And uh, 
So we got in these nightclubs and they're like, this is Harmsy. And they were like, this is unbelievable. Like, this is so cool. Like we're in a nightclub with Ben and a few other players. And and then the, the music stopped. This is in uh, One Oak in America, New yep. York. And the music stops and they're like, all right, like Ben goes to me like, oh, I got a little surprise for you. And I was like, like, like what do you mean? Mike Frone, like LeBron James in the building. Like LeBron comes, J.R. Smith, Dwayne Wade, Channing Tatum, Isaiah Tatum. Channing Tatum. Yeah. Oh, sorry, that was weird. Oh, these are NBA players. I'm more excited about Channing Tatum. He's a, he's a hilarious dude. Is he? So they, they just lost. This is when um, my, uh, Miami Cleveland sort of created like this old veteran type team, like Derek Rose in the team, but he wasn't there. Um, and they weren't good. Like they just didn't connect. And they lost by 30 that night to Brooklyn. And then like an hour later, they're in the nightclub with us, like one in the morning and like shook LeBron's hand. Like they all met LeBron. And it was just pretty like full on. You're like, we're in a oh, nightclub, we're in a booth, like drinking red wine with LeBron and stuff. And um, and it wasn't until we woke, like we went, like obviously um, we left there, like probably left there like four and went, went home and fell asleep. And you sort of wake up, you're like, that actually really happened. Like, you're like holy shit. I messaged Ben, I was like, mate, like that is arguably the best night I reckon I'll ever have, like ever. Like, thank you. All the boys are so appreciative. And I think... Word got out like I think Dom a few a few of the boys told their WhatsApp group yeah, so yeah. so they should like oh yeah and then it got out to Herald Sun like oh Melbourne boys are partying oh, with yeah. LeBron but it wasn't we weren't partying with LeBron like we were we shook his hand <laughs> we shook his hand <laughs> and he, he ignored us so, that counts uh, okay. that was pretty cool um, but yeah every year sort of when we got to America we got to America <laughs> but oh. this year Salem was fortunate enough to come to America with me so yeah. Um, that was fun. So we did our training camp in Portland, yeah, um, which was amazing. So the Nike headquarters. Um, so did you just, because obviously you're, you're a Nike athlete, did you just what, like contact them and be like, we want to come over and check it out? Or? Well, I saw, I saw Bonten Pally, Travis Boak and um, Dunkley, Josh Dunkley do it yeah. the year before I did. And I, I messaged Bonten. I said, yeah, really random. Um, sorry, I got your number off the Nike guy. Um, <laughs> yeah. Just want to know how it was the Nike trip. Like I really want to do it. And he goes, mate, it was really beneficial. Um, do this, this, and this, and the guys who sort of you work with are, are unbelievable. There's a trainer called Keith who was amazing, and sort of it was sort of similar stuff to what you do here. Um, but it's just the the just the um, the actual layout is just incredible. Like you you're there on the Nike headquarters. The trainers the trainers unbelievable. The facilities you're training on are incredible, and it's not just like the you sort of being a Nike athlete or being an athlete, and they sort of treat you like you are like a a LeBron or something. That's mm. probably the coolest thing I found. Like you're, you're there. Everyone's really respectful. Everyone knows you're an athlete. Like good day, Christian. Like everyone knows who you are and when you, what sessions you're doing. And, and there's so many things I took out of it. I mean, we spoke to um, this guy called Howard who worked with LeBron, with LeBron, sorry, worked with Michael Jordan. Oh, yeah. you, sat, you sat with him for an hour and a half. And some of the, you know, stories you hear that, um, you know, he heard from, well, not heard, he, he was with Le, um, Michael Jordan and stuff like that stuff is, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty cool. What, did you take, like, is there anything that you still use from that now? Like, yeah, there's, a, I guess there's a few stretching things you sort of take from there and um, sort of exercises with just some strength stuff, but more the, like, there's a few books he gave me, um, Howard, um, that he wrote um, on, on more off the field, like your mindset and stuff yeah. that I've sort of read and um, they're really, really cool. Did you meet any other cool athletes there? I saw you put up a cool photo yeah. with... Um, Ali, Ali, how do you Ali, 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 Ali Chikobi? Yeah. Chik I know the last name yeah. Chikobi. Chikobi. So, so he was the, the ran the um, yeah. Boston Marathon. He broke the record. Yeah. First person ever to do under two hours in a marathon. Yeah. I worked it out. Was that pre him doing that or? I think it was post Boston. No, maybe post Boston. Yeah. Yeah. So they worked it out. 17 seconds per hundred meters on average. He was running for 42 Ks. And, and for people out there, like, I don't know what you run and you're probably a lot better <laughs> than me, know, but like we used to do two Ks. <laughs> and uh, 2K time trials. And my best overrun was a 6.25. Wow. So that's three minute- Three minutes 12. Three minute 12 K pace. Yeah. And he's running that for, he's running, beating 42, that for 42, 42 kilometers. It's pretty crazy. And the best one I've ever seen in AFL would be like Tom Scully, Ed Kerno. they run sort of like 5.50. So it's, it's, it's pretty ridiculous. much running at their pace yeah. for 42 Ks. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's, um, but he, yeah, when I met him, he doesn't speak English, so you can't really, I, can't, yeah. I don't really have many stories. Cause he, yeah. I yeah. remember- um, You didn't go to One Oak with him. <laughs> <laughs> I remember um, we, the, they had like a, Eli, Eli Kachobi's coming to Nike headquarters and yep. like everyone sort of stopped what they're doing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Heaps of people on campus. And, 
but the interviewer was asking the hardest questions, but he can't, he doesn't speak English. So uh. he's like, like, what would you, what was your mindset like when you were 21 Ks in? He's like, yes, very good. And everyone's yeah. like, yeah, like, yeah. I think, like, didn't really know what to say. It's a good answer. He's yeah, honest. it's a great answer. Good yeah. Mate, talk us through your, your love for, for basketball, I suppose, in general, but CP3, Chris Paul. Is he your favourite player still? CP3 is not my... No, no. He's West, not? Westbrook. Westbrook. Okay. So this is so funny. Is this is this something I, that happens? I know where this has happened. Okay. So oh, okay. I've been called CP5. That's the... Okay. Which is the biggest... You don't crush. like it? No, I don't like it at all. It's okay. very... It's, I, okay. There we go. I like it, but I like, I like it because it's CP5. But yes. The story behind it is so arrogant and like... Someone said to me, the media guy for Melbourne was behind oh. me one day walking in the corridor and someone said to me, oh, CP3. And I was like, oh, no, it's, no, like, wouldn't it be CP5 or something like yeah. that? Yeah. And then he, and the day <laughs> later, so he writes that down and then the day later goes, Chris You Parker, want to be known as CP5? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I was just like, so now CP5 is a thing, I guess. So, but it wasn't a time when I, I was just into the club. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Like, who is this arrogant prick calling okay. himself CP? But it's, was wrong. It makes sense. But okay. Russell well, Westbrook's my favorite player. Well, it's good that we've put that out into the world now. Thank um, you. And yep. people know that. So I, just <laughs> wanted, I, I knew that. I just wanted to clear it up, obviously. Um, Russell Westbrook. There's a really good song about Russell Westbrook. Um, do you like oh. Little Dicky? Have you ever yeah, heard of Little Dicky? Yeah, I met him. I met him at the bar, at the bowling. Uh, bowling. I met him at the he loves Philadelphia. Game. He loves Philadelphia, doesn't he? loves Philly. Yeah. I met him. So fi- I got a photo on my phone, actually, of him. We'll get this up. Um, <laughs> Lil Dicky is like one of my favorite rappers. He's and if hilarious. anyone's never seen his stuff, like he's hilarious, have but he's you, actually like really good too. Have you heard his rap on Sway? Yes. <laughs> it is unbelievable. We'll, we'll put it in the show notes. It, it is stun- like, it's funny, but it's actually like he's legit. Really, he's You're like, wow, genius, yeah. where, where's this going? He write, he does this one about um, Russell Westbrook. Yeah. And like, I'm not massively into basketball, obviously I know who Russell Westbrook is, but I'll send you this one he does about Russell Westbrook. Russell Westbrook um, basically about like how he if he never knew his own sort of strength and what he could be it's incredible it sounds terrible but I'll send it to you Um, we'll do that now on basketball and I suppose this is transitioning to the next part that I love about you and I really want to talk about it's not necessarily about the the sport but it's about the branding of it yep we had Ben Crow on a podcast like a while ago Mojo and Joe Crow yeah he's Mojo good. Crow incredible so he's he's fantastic and obviously he used to work for Nike as well so yep. he used to work with like Phil Knight and yep. and everything um and he talked a lot about like storytelling in athletes and how like Nike would always try and like paint a picture of the athlete and not 100%. just about like the you know the athlete itself but about the person yep and I feel like you do that better than most people in the AFL and you know like the way you have your social media um, you put up the things you like, like your basketball, the shoes, um, the things that you're interested in outside of footy. Is that something that you actually think about? Like, is it something that you actually go like, no, I want these to be my things. I want people to affiliate me with, with this look or this, this style or these sort of thoughts. Like, cause you look at NBA and basketball, and I feel like that, that is basketball players have that, you know, they have that sort of th- those brands that they know what they're affiliated with. Yeah. I think, Firstly, like social media is a really good platform if you want to express your ideas and you want to sort of start your own type of thing or you want to show people what you're doing. I think it's also a bad thing because then you can cop a little bit of heat Mm. on that. But I think the more I've gotten comfortable with who I am as a person and um, comfortable in my own skin, I feel like I've just sort of just been throwing up photos and not really caring what people care, what people think about me as long as I really like them, to be honest. And um, yeah, I think I, I love fashion. I love I love people. I love meeting new people. I love clothes. I love shoes. Um, so I'll, I try and express that as much as possible. And I've created a really good relationship um, with Nike. Um, the guy at Nike, Curtis Evans, is one of my good mates and he's an absolute ripper. So he, he definitely helps me out. So I'll shout him out there. Yeah, um, yeah. we like Curtis. I don't know him, but I would, I'd like to be friends with him. Yeah, so. everyone would like to be friends. <laughs> yeah, friends. Yeah, everyone would like to be friends with Curtis <laughs> Evans. Um, so I, I gotta, I'm blessed to have him yeah. as part of my life because... I wouldn't be doing this branding stuff if it wasn't for me. Nah, man, you, you are killing it. For people who haven't checked out um, your Instagram and socials, at Christian Petrarca, because it is, it is man, like it's it's aesthetically so pleasing. Like, I know that sounds really strange, um, but, you know, like your sneakers and it's things that I'm really into too. And I know that yeah. that's what we sort of chatted about before the podcast. That was sort of our relationship yeah. based on shoes. But it is funny, isn't it? Because like you look at NBA in America 
and it's so promoted there. Like it's so cool to be your own person and be yourself and Australian embrace society, it. Man. What, why do you think we do this, man? Like, poppy syndrome. Is that what it is? hundred percent. What Like, because I, I like you, like I gave up a long time ago caring what people think. Yeah. And like, I wouldn't do this if I yeah. cared because yeah. like, obviously there's people that yeah. hate it, you know, 100%. and they hate me for doing it. I don't really care. Like, I don't want you to hate me, but like, yeah. what, what what's your process around that? Like, why do you it's think Australian, that we, Yeah, it's yeah. Australian society. It's the, I feel like our generation is getting, and even younger are getting away from that and starting to become your own person and not really caring what anyone thinks and focusing on like that NBA in terms of like branding and and throwing up stuff and mm. not really caring. I just think it's like, it's just that tall poppy syndrome I find like, do, no, do you stop, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. Like 100%. it's like, oh, you can't be, you can't be too good for yourself, type thing. Like, yeah, don't, don't put yourself out there. And don't it's put like, yourself out there. Like you know, you should be all like, you know, really humble and respectful. It's like you still are humble and respectful, but you're just showing who you are as a person. And yeah, uh, that's probably the going back to my first year. It's probably one thing that I struggle with, and probably the AFL struggle with in terms of not struggle with they probably weren't used to me being so confident and being so expressive of who I am and what I like sort of just say what I say. Yeah. So I guess probably that's what happened at the start. But um, I feel like our, especially the younger boys, like Cozzy Pickett um, and Luke Jackson and Trent Rivers are guys who we drafted this year. And they're awesome. Cause they just, they just so chilled out and they just, they're their own person. I feel like, you know, your cl- you know, your culture at the club is really good when you can just sort of accept people for Embrace who hundred percent. I couldn't agree more, man. And even with that, like when I, first got into the system it was so much like that you know like i wasn't playing every week but i loved doing like media yeah. stuff and they'd be like what are you fucking doing man yeah. like go get a game first yeah, go get a kick it. and i was like oh well like i just never really i was like well why can't i still do this but then i believed it you know i was like oh well yeah i can't do it unless i'm doing 100%. this and like if i didn't get to the giants where they were a younger yeah. culture and they were just like man fucking go for it you know embrace yeah, it be 100%. like this and, and then you just think well fuck the only reason people ever really shoot other people down is because yeah. they wish they probably were yeah. doing it themselves. Well, my 2019 year when we, after the prelim, my 2019 year when we were terrible, I, I deleted Instagram. I was like, nah, like, don't want to cop the hate. Like, if I put up an Instagram, like, all this stuff. Mm. Then after that, I was like, stuff it. Like, yeah. who cares? Like, I don't really give a shit how many posts I put up a week or what this person thinks of me. Like, as long as my girlfriend says something then yeah. I'm like all right fair enough yeah I'm oh like, yeah oh, that's a game changer or, yeah. or your family's like oh shit like what are you doing type thing that's all I care about is what my my girlfriend says or my family says and what my my you know my teammates say yeah no I, I totally agree totally agree um on AFL and I suppose you're looking at guys with brands and and whatnot now because you look at like some of the young guys coming through as you said like Cozzy Pickett and um someone that stands out like is Bailey Smith like 100%. he's you know he's got like an awesome awesome brand he's he's obviously a mad dog um who would you invest in okay wow oh bailey smith for sure you invest in bailey smith yeah i can model for kelvin klein yeah because sometimes i look at players for example and you said it before and you got like because that tall poppy syndrome so like in our brain Mm. that like i still look at guys sometimes and I go, oh, this guy's fucking carrying on a bit. Yeah. And then I go, no, 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 no. Nah, no, I'm nah. like, no, nah, fuck that. Like, he's actually killing it. Like, well done. Like, I love it. But you got to catch yourself out on it. And the more 100%. you keep catching yourself 100%. out, like, you're like, yeah, that's sick. Like, I love that. And you could say the same thing. Like, I used to see all these young guys on TikTok. And I was like, fuck, yeah. come on, boys. Like, 100%. you know, do your shit. And I'm like, no, nah, actually, fuck that. Like, yeah, let them exactly do their thing, right. man. Like, let them, like, they're just doing their thing. Like, that's smart. Like, 100%. I should have done that, you know? I feel like if you're not posting, see, I get caught in it sometimes as well. Like, I feel like I have to post some workout to show that I'm actually working Work, out. Yeah, yeah. It like kind of annoys me. It's like, oh, like the gym yesterday is like, oh, I have to put up a photo so people know that I'm working out. Yeah. It's like, then I'm like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. shut up. Yeah. Like, it's just yeah. sort of like, you're fine. Like yeah. type thing. You sort of, I, I sometimes get into it, but then you're like, at the same time, you're like, no, who cares? But mm. I follow, Stephen Keneally has got a really cool Instagram. Yeah, he does. I really like his, yep. um, I like. Love his art. Food. I love it. Yeah, hundred yep. percent. And he's a fellow Italian. So yep. I respect that. Um, um, <laughs> Nick Nat Nui's Nick Nat Nui's cool. got a really cool brand. Boke's got a good brand too. Boke, Boke's, Boke's got a Boke's very with cool. Red Bull. Yeah, um, he's a really good dude. Dusty Martin. Dusty Martin's a good one. See, he's someone that's like his brand's different. To everyone's because he's a he's like you can almost tell he's an introvert. But he's got like. But stuff, he's got yeah. his brand going yeah. where he doesn't post much, but people follow him because he's like that. Yeah. I reckon. I reckon yeah. that's really cool. There's yeah, there's there's heaps of people that 
What about the AFL that's sort of getting to getting that? Yeah, and I think the NRL do it well. Like I don't actually support the NRL like in terms of watching every week, but like Kalen Ponga. Kalen Ponga, yeah. He's so sick. Like yeah. he's got such cool things going he does, on. Hundred percent. Like, yeah, we just need to embrace it because otherwise you just get that bad like connotation 100%. towards it. In terms of NBA guys or you know, any other athletes, who do you take inspiration from in terms of that? Is there anyone you follow oh, West, that you love? Westbrook's fashion yeah. is off its head. Yeah, would you, like next year, right? You know how we did that trial <laughs> of the rocking up in kits? I would rock Would you one. do it? Yeah. What would you wear? Oh, that is a hard question. <laughs> but would you go yeah, hard? I'd what, for the AFLX thing? No, nah, like every week. I'm talking every week. They said, no, you can rock yeah, up with whatever you want. Yeah. Hunt, you've oh, got to, man. I'd rock like Curtis a three, would I'd, be rock, happy. I'd rock like a three piece with the Air Maxes or something. Would like you? Something like that, yeah. That's sick. It'd be bloody hard. They they dress every day. That's what I mean. You gotta have a lot Wait, of clothes. ours is like you can sort of tell I can we play on the weekends, so yeah. you can sort of know what you're wearing from Monday to Friday. Yeah. So that's a yeah. I, I would love that. Have you ever asked Ben Simmons, like, how do they get clothes? Like no, obviously they a, buy them. A, um, do they have a stylist or something? Yeah, they have a stylist. Yep. Yeah, they have a stylist. That's sick. That's really well, cool. Well, they're on so much money, like 500 bucks for a pair of Gucci shorts. Yeah. Like, with like 50 cents. So, but like what I, yeah, because like they don't really, they sort of live out of hotels, don't they? Yeah. So like they wouldn't travel with their clothes or no, would someone just. They'd probably buy where they are. It's yeah. <laughs> a lot of money. Well, I'm pretty sure PJ Tucker, when he went to the hub, I think he took over 150 shoes and no, he wasn't, he was just gone from his hotel to the game, to the bubble. Yeah, it's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty full on. He's actually, PJ Tucker is someone that's got, you should look him up. He's got the best sneaker collection yeah. I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, no, I have seen, uh, my mate um, sends me his stuff all the time. Yeah, ridiculous. Swaggy P has some cool Swaggy things P. too. <laughs> I like his, because he, he played in 500s. He did. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. A shout out to Push Pull as well. A brand that I really like. Australian brand? Yep. Yep. A couple okay. of boys from Melbourne area. Check that out. Good things. Mate, what's, what's next for Christian Petrarca? Obviously, Big year coming up next year. Let's talk footy first. Like, what what are you focusing on this year? I know we spoke earlier. You just came from Pilates. You've been training really hard, but also trying to have a break. So I think yep. there's a big thing. Like you said, you already know it, but you train too hard this time of year. You just cook yourself, and you, you're already done for the rest. Are you are you doing anything different this year? Like, I know Pilates. You said, but is there something else you're looking at doing? Or uh, not necessarily. I think just sort of what worked last year. Sort of just you know, keep that routine going and, and keep that structure. Um, you try and do a little things here and there. Like I'm doing a little bit, doing a little bit more plyometrics type stuff and trying to get a bit more jump. Um, but so what's that for? Like, I, I think I know what that is, but that's more like just jumping speed. Pretty much. Repeat. Yeah. Repeat speed, repeat jumping type stuff, um, counteractive movement type jumping stuff. So, um, it, it won't affect you much, but I like doing that stuff. I don't really do much leg weights because yeah. I'm so big in terms of also heavy. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I felt like if I did, I would put on weight. So I do a lot more agility, a lot more band resistance type stuff. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, that's something I've sort of incorporated. But other than that, just yeah, my yoga and Pilates type stuff. And um, and as you said, this time of the year, I mean, it's November. We don't go back till January the 5th. You so, got to refresh. So you got to, you got to, you know, I feel like you see people on Instagram doing workouts and, 5 a.m. and whatever and mm. training and you really got to get out of your head like oh I shouldn't be you know yeah. sometimes you go oh shit I should be training more being sometimes like, I feel like the more you post about that you're just trying to like you know you said before like if you I, I think and again Chris Judd always used to say like it's when you train um, he used to say so like the club he's just like when you train like you train not to like show someone you're training just to like get it in your own bank you know 100%. and normally like he, he, he said that like he'd always do sessions and not tell anyone about them because he was like then it was just purely him benefiting mm. from it. Cause he would say like, he'd even compete with other people. Yeah, it's like, 100%. well, if I, if you tell me you're doing a session, then it's like, well, fuck maybe well, I'm, I'm, I might I'm do I'm one doing. too. hundred percent. So it's like, well, yeah, that's a, that's a very good point. Yeah. It's a competitive thing. You don't want to, you're on an edge. It is. And it's, it's such edge. a, it's an AFL is a team game. Yeah. But you still want, you're, you're still fighting for yeah. spots in your team and stuff like that. So I understand that perspective at the same time as well, though, like, especially this time of the year, like you don't want to burn out. So no. if you're doing, as we said before, off, off the mic, if you if you're training so much, I mean it's November. Like the season will start to another five months away in yeah. March. So you don't want to be peaking now, and then you know by the time March comes around, you're absolutely cooked. So you want to sort of slowly, steadily build up. So my Tuesday, Thursdays, Monday, Wednesday, Fridays when I do my running and, and my leg weights. Um, 
But then Tuesday, Thursdays, some guys like to do off legs and stuff. I sort of just try and do some mindfulness or yoga or some Pilates and sort of keep – it's off legs, but it's still – it's actually still hard, so oh, yeah. it's good. Off the field, um, and I suppose this is what I love talking about with you, like what, what do you feel like is is – next for you off field i know you're only shortly into your career yeah. but like do you want to ever start anything there like you're in your fashion is it a label like is is fashion something you want to get into like or it's so hard the fashion like australian society is just not australian society the australian um how do you describe market it? market is, yeah. it's just so small i feel mm. like you got to be you got to really break through if you're here you got the contacts yeah it's a good point <laughs> You do have the contacts. Uh, it's something. No, oh, I do, but I don't. Like, I just feel be full. I feel like outside of footy, like off when I finish footy, I probably would do something. But at the moment, I'm just so switched on with footy. Yeah. I don't really see anything. Like, I'm doing uni. I'm doing commerce marketing at um, Swinburne, so doing one subject a semester, and um, that's been that's been really good. I got exams coming up soon, so that's that's mm. um, sort of takes your mind off things. And um, I just renovated. Well, my brother just renovated my house for me. Yep. Um, dynamic built construction. Yes, so Robert we love Traka. that. Best builders in the uh, Best builders Australian. In, yep. <laughs> I, I, I need a builder, so we'll be in, t- we'll be oh, in touch. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. I've already got his number. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so he's been he's been awesome. So he's someone that, um, yeah, that helped me with that. And yep. I feel like at the start of the renovation when I did it, you have no idea what the hell is going on. Like, you, like tradies work in millimetres, like 400 mil. With I like, know. Just say forty centimeters, like it's so much. It's so much easier. Like yeah, that's three hundred mil. You're like, cool. Like, <laughs> so that's something that like I struggle with, especially like quotes and invoices. And yeah. now I now that it's finished, um, it's been the best thing. Like I've absolutely loved it. Like it's something I'll construction is something I want to do yeah. down the path. Like, like property like development, property sort development. Of side, yeah. You know, buying a buying an old house, renovating it, flipping it over. So we'll see how we go. Yeah. No, I love it, man. Thank you so much Thank um you. i've absolutely loved having you on today bro i've learned so much and yeah man like uh, yeah extremely extremely um impressive unit i'm looking forward to 2021 for you because i know it's gonna be huge so Appreciate it. Thank thanks you. so much for coming on the show brother. Thank you very much. Thank you guys.